what else has been done is preparation for this third generation i5 chip and the major thing that was required was to upgrade the BIOS. And if you ever need to upgrade a BIOS, there are different ways of upgrading it. Best way to do it, first start with the manual for the motherboard. It will explain the options available in relation, in relation to flashing the BIOS and what's available. And that's your point of call before any other reference material from the manufacturer's website themselves in relation to the board and also the board specific okay and then with the board specific also the revision number so for example i'll take you guys over here right and i'll show you guys how to address you know drivers and what you need to download in relation to the computer when you're setting it up because this is like setting it up for the first time i will have to replace that cpu take that cooler off and it's a complete and utter almost fresh build you could say with all the upgrades that are occurring if you get my drift Yeah, so first things first, what you want to do is you want to go to the applicable manufacturer's website. Generally in your region, it's always helpful as well. And you you want to type in in the search slash and or you can type it in in Google as well. But you type in your motherboard name, essentially. Ours was GAZ68APD3. When it comes to checking the revision number, this board is flipped here but it's usually in the bottom left corner. So over here, you'll see that it says revision 2.0, designed in Taipei, generally near the HD audio. And our one regarding this is also the revision 2.0. So when you've got that, that's when you notice when you go to the manufacturer's website for the motherboard. So here's the motherboard with all the features which are on it. So it's got a dual BIOS, it's got some USB 3. But with that being said, this is where you see the revision so you've got revision 2.0 and we're on that website now but revision 1.0 is here and if you press that it's generally relevant on all sites this information if you press that it will change it to the revision it will look everything will look almost exactly the same except you may find that when you go over to support okay support is where you have your downloads generally and this is where they may be different for revision 2.0 as opposed to revision 1.0. So with that being said, you go into your downloads. You've got your manual always here. You can get your manual. There's a might be a couple of versions of it. And with the manual, you'll find the information in relation to the BIOS and which BIOS you need. So again, CPU support and things like that and RAM support will be here as well. This is where I found out, for example, that my i5-3570 which is going to be upgrading the sandy bridge cpu with an ivy bridge requires since bios version f d okay so i checked the bios on the motherboard where you can check it with cpu z in the operating system or you can check it in the bios itself we had f b so it was the bios needed an upgrade to be able to run the new Ivy Bridge Core i5-3570 that we're using to upgrade this computer with as well. That being said, then you eventually migrate towards downloads. You will start off with the option of driver OS. So we'll put in Windows 10 64-bit. But understand because this computer is so old, 10 or 11, 12 years of age, Windows 8.1 64-bit drivers may also be needed because we may not have any for Windows 10. And then we'll install those and then upgrade Windows applicably. And Windows will then upgrade those specific files rather than let Windows put some something else willy-nilly that isn't exactly what's meant to be for the motherboard originally to, in relation to it. Okay, guys. But we'll put Windows 10 64-bit to keep it nice and simple. Things that you do need to download, apart from what we're getting to, which is the BIOS, is your chipset drivers. And you're going to install all of this before you install. Then finally, the graphics card drivers. And then you can, like, say, for example, turn on Windows and go online and then update Windows itself. Because you don't want Windows updating certain things 
that need to be specific from the manufacturer's website. Sometimes they're right, sometimes they're wrong. If they're wrong, you may not see the problem till a couple of months down the track anyway. So it's something to be vigilant about. We'll get to eventually something like BIOS, for example. So audio drivers, VGA drivers, things like that. So if I go back up here to driver and we go to 8.1 now, 64 bit, we've got an audio driver, see? We've got chipset drivers still. We've got LAN drivers. We've got SATA RAID ARCHI drivers. We've got USB 3.0 drivers. We didn't have any of these and then needed to have the motherboard run effectively. Now, 8.1 and Windows 7 were the building blocks to Windows 10. Trust me, it will work. You just need to update then after that and accept any updates on top of those drivers that were made in relation to those being installed for the motherboard specific this is what you do with legacy boards when you're trying to set things up but going back to windows 10 64 bit and going back to the bios we know that fd is required fd is the second last bios that was released for this board and a beta bios was released subsequently after which i wasn't going to play with so as the ua9 version so i we upgraded from fb from 2011 to fd so fc was when its support intel third generation came in but it's for e1 stepping so then improves usb 3.0 compatibility for fd as well we grabbed that and it's been essentially installed how it was installed for at least in my relation this manual was very user friendly so for example uh, manual wise english we'll open that up and i already know what page it's on okay but you'll go essentially bios update utilities updating the bios with the q flash utility updating the bios with the app bios utility right so we go to q flash and what's a q flash bios um you can update the system bios without having to enter the operating system or MS-DOS from back in the day or Windows first. So it's it's a better way of doing it, doing it either in the BIOS itself on that level, okay? Because problems can always happen in a Microsoft Windows operating system environment. It adds the chances for other problems to occur and you never want a BIOS to be interrupted when it's updating the BIOS, okay? Because you may brick the board. So. Embedded into BIOS, the QFlash tool frees you from the hassles of going through complicated BIOS flashing processes. Updating the BIOS with the QFlash utility. It just tells you how to do it. So make sure you've got a USB drive, FAT32, 16 or 12. That's the format it's in, okay? So also an old drive for older, like USB 2.0, so you don't need fancy 3.1. Generally, it's much more stable, okay? And then you just go to the instructions. Sometimes you need to rename something. Sometimes you don't. And you always put the file, the BIOS file in the root directory, which is the first folder of that hopefully empty USB, not to confuse stuff. You're, you can always have a BIOS USB that you change it over. And that's what we did with this one over here to get essentially FD on. Enough said there, guys. I hope that helps you guys in relation to setting up. And then once all that's done, Windows updates. Windows updates, re-roll Windows updates, restart Windows updates, restart, restart Windows updates, and eventually you get to it all being ready to rock and roll with. What do you have to do then? I'll tell you what you have to do then. Let's change this uh, view. Then you have to get rid of the Windows malware, and then you have to optimize Windows, and then you have to do performance plans, things like that, uh, turn background operations off, privacy settings, and yeah the list goes on you can go on and be as pedantic as you like i'm going to do this for the system so that the young lady who's using it has the best system she can from that day and age running windows 10 professional it's going to be schmitten and sweet so hope you guys have an understanding of what has to get done and what already has been done that being said, thanks for joining us at the Technus Corner. Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. All the uh, likes and subs are greatly appreciated. It arms me with the uh, brain-wise and good feeling-wise to uh, continue soldering on for people who actually watch this shit. <laughs>